even after an atom forms a covalent bond, it still has an electrostatic attraction for its neighbors. If the attraction or cohesive energy between molecules is larger than their energy of motion, the molecules will stick together and form a liquid or solid. In fact, one way we determine cohesive energies is by measuring boiling points. On this chart, you can see that boiling points rise as molecules increase in size, which tells us that cohesive energies go up as molecules get larger. Now, in addition to size, there are other factors that can raise cohesive energies. For example, this molecule, methyl chloride, is very similar to methane, but has a chlorine atom in place of one of the hydrogens in methane. The chlorine raises the cohesive energy significantly. The boiling point of methyl chloride is up around zero degrees centigrade, 160 degrees centigrade above the boiling point of methane. Polymer molecules that contain chlorine, oxygen, or nitrogen are called polar molecules. They have higher cohesive energies than nonpolar molecules such as polyethylene. However, because they are so large, all polymer molecules, whether polar or not, have reasonably high cohesive energies. These energies have a very important effect on many polymer properties, among them the melting point. Melting points can be determined on a special hot plate whose temperature rises along its length. The samples to be melted are all hydrocarbons ranging in size from about 1,000 carbon atoms to 30. As they melt, they become clear. Wax melts at about 60 degrees centigrade. The cohesive forces between small wax molecules are relatively weak. This sample melts at about 80 degrees centigrade because the cohesive forces between these larger molecules are greater than those in wax. Here the melting point is above 130 degrees centigrade, somewhat higher than the previous sample. But this molecule is 10 times larger. Melting points do not increase in direct proportion with sizes. This curve for nonpolar molecules shows the relationship between the melting point and the average number of carbon atoms in the chain. Melting points rise quite rapidly, up to about 80 carbon atoms, more slowly above 100 carbon atoms, and finally reach a limit when molecules contain several hundred carbon atoms. For nonpolar linear molecules, the limit is close to 140 degrees centigrade. For comparison, here are two samples containing polar molecules. Polyvinyl chloride, or PVC, simply becomes soft at about 150 degrees centigrade and even at 200 degrees centigrade, nylon is hardly affected. The higher cohesive energies of these polar molecules are reflected in their greater resistance to melting. However, other factors, such as the structural regularity or crystalline content, also affect melting points. For example, this linear polyethylene has more structural regularity than this branch sample. This material melts at about 115 degrees centigrade, 20 degrees lower than the linear polymer because the chain branches inhibit crystal growth and also introduce imperfections in crystal structure. 